Brussels. We'll get stuck into that later on. That's the press conference taking place this afternoon. But before that, we have this one. Natasha Jonas takes on De Care. This is a big fight for Tasha. She only unified, what, a couple of months ago, and now she's looking to add another belt to her collection. First of all, I'm trying to stop myself from breaking into song when you said the love factor, I'm thinking. That's why I carried on talking, <laughs> to stop you, because I knew you could. Uh, but this bill itself, I think this is a, a tough fight. On paper, anyway, it's a tough fight. And I've seen the care, the cats, and I look at it and I think, you know what, this might be a tougher than what you realise. Uh, former IBF champion twice, only lost uh, to Clarissa Shields. Second time out of, the, uh, out of Canada, she's fought. They're the thing, that's the thing going against her. Uh, but as a fighter, she's naturally bigger uh, than Natasha at the weight. There's a lot more to go for. Well, well, Tasha had to jump up three weight classes, didn't she, to, to win the world title at the third time of asking, whereas De Care has always been around this weight. You'll, you'll see a size difference, I think. Reports in the hotel, people walk around saying, she's massive, you're looking at them thinking, this girl, even though on paper it doesn't like she can bang, she wants to fight, she wants to tear up. So this is one of those fights that could actually be set alight from the off because of the style of fights. De Care's also a southpaw, Tasha's a southpaw. It's the first southpaw as a pro that Natasha will face. How do you think she'll fare? How do you think she'll handle it? Usually you find southpaws having to fight southpaws find it very awkward because there's not many southpaws around. So, so again, it's, it's, it's a big adjustment. So it depends on which one's more comfortable with that unorthodox style, but sparring with another southpaw uh, or being able to switch. To, to switch. I gather that the care can switch as well. So how do you prepare for somebody like that? And will she bring that into the fight itself? Um, I do think um, it's a tough, tough fight. But, Natasha wants again. but what Natasha does have is momentum now, doesn't she? And confidence from winning the world title, from unifying. And that's often invaluable in, in fights like this makes a fire, makes all the difference. And everything is, there's that, there's that carrot that's there, the possibility that Clarissa Shields will come over here to the UK again to fight because she knows the fan base that she's developed here, the, 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 the waves that she, she created here, she knows that that could fight could happen. So Clarissa's on about dropping down to come and fight Natasha. Well, another fight I'm very much looking forward to, as I'm sure are you and everyone else, is Dalton Smith versus Casey Benjamin. It's the first defence of his British title, and there's something about a British title. We always talk about this, but they often produce absolute crackers, don't they? Dalton Smith, chef your boy, so I've always got to have his back no matter what. And the thing is, he's doing it the traditional way. Yeah. This kid is a respectable, good, good fighter. And, and the way he's coming along, the way he's, he's breezing through domestic level, you know he's beyond the British title standard, but he wants to pick up the Lonzo Bell, keep the Lonzo Bell, probably go for the Commonwealth, then go for the European. On the world circuit, they know who he is. They know what this young man's capable of doing. Amateur and professionally, they are, they do now, they, they are now aware of him. How much of a star in the making is he? Uh, potentially, as long as he keeps his feet on the ground, his, his dad keeps him in check. This young man can go forever and a day. He, he, he's a proper talented young fighter. Fraser Clark also in action at heavyweight on, on Saturday night. He's had a bit of a frustrating start, as not he, to his professional career. His first fight wasn't the opponent that he wanted. Yeah. He got the win anyway. He picked up that, that hand injury, didn't he? Went into the second fight in Bournemouth, Bracamonte. That was a, a good win for him. But his last fight, matchmaking, he had issues with that, understandably. He'll be looking surely to make a statement on Saturday, but... It's a tough test in his way on paper. He's got a tough test. He's in his opponent is classed as probably one of the toughest journeymen out there, and yeah. he's upset the apple cart for a few potential prospects. This is what Fraser needs. Fraser spars, he's boxed, he's with, with, with the most of, of the world's elite. Now he needs to do it on stage. Now he needs to do it where he benefits from it for his career. So it's important that Fraser gets the job done because he needs to be fast tracked and do it in, in style. Especially with heavyweights, and particularly when they're in the earliest ages, I guess, in their professional career, there's that sort of want, isn't there, to, to get the knockout, to impress. But what also is imperative and valuable for learning experience is getting rounds under your belt. Do you think Fraser will be are we getting those on Saturday? I, I get that, but hopefully he's getting the rounds in, 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 the, in the gym. Hopefully that's what's important, because right now he needs to make an impression and get people talking about him. To get him talking about him, he's got to have He's got to be knocking people out. He's got to show people I can box as well as bash. So for me, I want to go to impress Oslo, get the job done, because he needs to leapfrog and get himself up front. If you could pick one fight on Saturday, what's your stand-up fight to watch? Top of the bill, uh, Jonathan Decare. That fight, to me, again, 
looking at on paper, it's a great fight, you know, both fighters, the hunger they've got, great fight. So again, top of the bell, top six. Oh, of course, Tom Smith, Sheffield boy. Absolutely, and the atmosphere in Manchester is always sort of second to none, isn't it? I know you love it being that way. Manchester is better than London. Oh! <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to London for a while now, so we're good. <laughs> OK, well, it's going to be good. All right, let's uh, hand you over to Big Mo for the introductions for the press conference. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Love Factory. Today's site for the official press conference for Boxer Fight Night on Sky Sports Live this Saturday in Manchester from the AO Arena. We would like to thank our official partners, Bet365, Everlast, Village Hotels, Wow Hydrate, and FCI Markets. Our undercard on Saturday will begin at 5.30 with our main card beginning at 7 o'clock. We have tons of rising talent, established stars, and champions competing at the AO Arena. Our co-main event, Birmingham versus Sheffield, Casey Benjamin versus the undefeated champion Dalton Smith for the British Super Lightweight Championship. Our main event, Saturday, the AO Arena in Manchester. Three belts will be on the line. First, from Quebec, Canada, the IBF Super Welterweight Champion, Medivh Dekir, takes on the WBC and the WBO Super Welterweight Champion, Natasha Jonas. And now I will turn it over to the host of our press conference, Savage Dan, who is joined by the CEO of Boxer, Ben Shalom. Dan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Big Mo. Welcome to Manchester. Welcome to what will be a huge fight week and a historic night at the AO Arena on Saturday evening. Natasha Jonas and Marie-Yves de Kerr top the bill, locking horns in a super welterweight world title unification bout, which also has the coveted Ring Magazine belt on the line. Dalton Smith makes his long-awaited Sky debut as he defends his super lightweight title against the dangerous Casey Benjamin. Manchester's very own Brad Ray challenges champion Tyler Denny for the English middleweight title and then there's the heavyweights. Big Phrase goes head to head with the dangerous Camille Sokolowski, and you will not want to miss that one. Vidal Riley, a man who needs no introduction, goes head to head in a local derby against fellow Londoner Ross McGuigan. And we also have the Boxer Series champion Dylan Chima, who's always in exciting fights, alongside local talent Clark Smith and Jack Kilgannon. It is going to be a brilliant night of boxing at the AO Arena. An iconic night in an iconic city. I feel like it's your, your favourite fight city at the moment. Ben, you are a boxer's promoter. Why are you always in Manchester? And why is this such an iconic city for, for, for boxing? Look, it's, um, it's where it all started for us. Uh, 2018, Ultimate Boxer won. Casey Benjamin was on that bill and we're back in Manchester. Over 7,000 people already have bought tickets for Saturday night. This is an amazing card, one of, one of our best, one that I'm really looking forward to, one that has competi competitive fights throughout the card from top to bottom. Unbelievable main event, Tasha Jonas. Obviously, her rise over the past 12 months has been incredible, and for her to headline now in Manchester, um, it's, a, it's a special moment for her third world title. The British title, as you mentioned, um, what a fight that is. Dalton Smith returns to Sky. Um, it's his nice debut for Boxer as well, and uh, hopefully many more to come. Um, he's fighting Casey Benjamin, who has been pushing for this fight ever since ever since we started. I think um, a lot of shine is on Dalton Smith, but this is the fight that Casey Benjamin wanted. When as soon as it was ordered, he he you know he made sure Mick Kennedy and his team that we put in a strong purse bid and won that fight. So right down the card from Adal, Brad Ray, and, and, and Fraser Clark all in career-defining fights, career breakthrough fights for them. Um, it's a fantastic card, and I can't wait for Saturday night. Well, let's get to the fighters. I will start with the cruiserweights. Ross, I will come to you first. You are unbeaten. You're an unknown quantity in many, in many ways, but it is a tall order. Do you have what it takes to beat Vidal Riley? I've definitely got it to it takes, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, I wouldn't have took this opportunity if I didn't feel like that was the situation. Uh, 
I'm under no illusion that Vidal is a good boxer, but I know what I bring to the table, what I can do in the ring, who I train with, how I prepare, and rest assured, when we get in that ring on Saturday, he will know who I am as well. You've had four weeks notice for this fight, but you were coming off another fight three weeks before that, so you're already ready and rolling into your next camp. Does that give you an advantage, knowing that you're already fight fit? Are you just there waiting for the phone to ring? I wouldn't say an advantage as such, but um, I am always in the gym, and obviously coming off a previous fight a few weeks before, it does help. Um, Vidal would have probably had more time than me knowing his actual date from the beginning, so I wouldn't say there's an advantage, but it, it definitely helps to kickstart the, the camp that I needed with the little time that I had. There's been no real animosity between you, but you've said that you want to press the action, you want to take Vidal to a place he's never been before. How do you do that? Yeah, Vidal's uh, he's a humble guy. He hasn't said anything to me. I treat others how I want to be treated. Um, and I, I dish out what I get. So, yeah, there's no need for animosity. But this is boxing. Um, we're both going to get in the ring and want to inflict punishment on each other. And, yeah, I'm, I feel like what I bring to the table, he hasn't experienced yet. And he hasn't experienced it for a long time. And uh, yeah, I'm 100% coming with everything. This is, this is a big opportunity for me, boxing on Sky and Boxer. And I'm, I'm definitely looking to take it with both hands. Vidal, your first, well, it's, it's an unbeaten opponent. Is this your toughest test today? No, I don't think so. Um, obviously, he's an undefeated opponent, so his mentality is, I've not lost before. That makes you do things, you know, it makes you try harder. I understand that, but skill-wise, He's not my best opponent to date, but it's for me to show on Saturday night. We watched your live workout. Um, clear to see your sharp, got power in both hands. You got an incredible stoppage last time at the AO Arena. Looking for something similar on Saturday night? Yeah, definitely. I think since I've started with boxing, my professional career has really begun. And in February, I got the guy down first round. June got the guy down first round, so and these weren't clean hits, so I'm I'm thinking I need to get a clean one Saturday. You've been called out by the likes of Jake Paul and many others. Is it difficult to keep the blinkers on and, and to block out all the white noise um, and, and focus on the task at hand? You seem very focused on your journey, but does it take much to, to be able to do that and, and to block out all the big fights that are there for you? doesn't take much at all. When we got the message and Ross's name was there, Ross has been the focus. It's the world that focuses on the other things. Uh, this fight will be streamed on your YouTube. I think that's the first time yep. I've seen that done. 1.2 million subscribers. Listen, everyone's in for a treat, I guess. I don't think it's been done before. If it has been done, then it's being done again better this time. But make sure, tune into the YouTube channel. You can watch it live. I know Ross will do his best, I'll do mine, and uh, we'll see a good fight. Ben, it's a cracking fight. Is it a step up for Vidal? I think it is. I mean, what a fight to start the night. Vidal Riley, if every fighter that we sign was willing to take on anything that was put in front of them, any test, to take on, you know, when you're fighting an unbeaten fighter, it's very, very hard to, you know, to know what they're going to come with, to know what level they're really going to perform at. And it, 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 there, was no, there was no hesitation when Ross's name was mentioned. And I'm sure that he's going to bring it on, on Saturday night. I know how I spoke to Steve Goodwin. They, they think he's a very, very good fighter. And he's, done, he's, you know, he's had some notable wins in the amateur scene as well. He's turned pro late. And he's coming to talk, cause an upset. But Fidel Riley, for me, is going right to the top of this division. And this is, this is a step on a big stage that he wants to take early on in his career and credit to him. It will definitely be an exciting one. Next, let's go to the middleweights. Brad Ray takes on Tyler Denny for his English title. Tyler, I will come to you first. You've said that you don't just want to nick rounds, that you want to win them convincingly against Brad. How do you go about doing that? Um, just do it myself, man. I think I'm going to have to be in a way in Manchester against a guy from Manchester, I'm expecting the crowd and stuff. And, you know, but, you know, I think if I perform the way I know I can, I'll come out with a victory. That's, so I just didn't be myself and get the win, keep hold of the belt. And that's it, man. You're making a bit of a habit of, of going on the road uh, and, and fighting champions. You fought Wilson Bent in Coventry, uh, and now you're fighting Brad Ray in Manchester. 
Is that part of your personality? You want to go into the Lions then and do it? Um, I don't think I have much choice, to be honest. Um, but I just, I just want to fight. So you, you throw me a fight, I'll take the fight. It's simple as that. Like I said, my last two was against River. Um, I fought Derek Azazi before that. That was like a neutral at Sheffield. I fought Udofi in London. And I'm at Manchester now. So, you know, I'm, I'm as game as the come, man. And I don't want to be just, known just for being game. I, I, I want to do... I want to fulfil my ability, and I think that's um, above above English level. But saying that, I think Brad's above English level as well, and it's, uh, it's a great fight, man. I've got a lot of respect for him, and uh, but I'm here to do the business. Brad is the home fighter, but you are the champion. Do you feel like you are not being treated or talked about as though you are the champion? Um, I'm not really asked, to be fair. I, I, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I think so, but because Brad signed up with Sky, so and boxing, it's a boxing event, they're going to back their guy, which, you know, you got to respect them for doing that. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm the champion, I'm, and I'm here to show why I'm the champion, and why I'll still be the champion come Saturday night. Brad, you are the local lad, you've had a brilliant win in February at the AO as well. Do you relish fighting in front of a home crowd? Yeah, 100%. Um, means the world to me to fight at Manchester Arena, you know, the, the arena that... I've been going to since with a since with a little kid, um, watching some of some of the fighters I used to look up to, um, you know. And now it's me in there, and it, it's consistent. It's been my third time fighting at the arena, and hopefully I can make a habit of it. Saturday night, you have the opportunity to to win the first major title of your career up against a, a rough and rugged opponent. What do you have to do to get the win against? against him it's a, it's a real clash of styles yeah I think it's a great clash of styles um, Tyler's a very very good fighter and as he's just said there I think he's above English level um, I think this is a great fight for the English title but you know I've, I've put the work in the gym um, and you know whatever he brings I'm confident that, that, that we're going to get the win and that title you know it's not just coming on holiday to Manchester it'll be staying here you've been in the gym leaving no stone unturned. You've also been working with, with Ricky Hatton. He's looking good. How has that motivated you? How has that helped you to, to kick on in this camp? Yeah, it's been class, you know, sharing a camp with Rick. Um, obviously, great idea from the AO Arena to, to put both shows on the same night. Um, and, you know, it's been good. We've, we've gone through the camp together. We've been getting in together. We've kind of just one-to-one -one sessions, me and then my coach Blaine. Um, so yeah, you know, it's been good and he's looking, he's looking well, he's looking well, gives me that extra little push, I give him that extra push and hopefully it's going to be two good performances on Saturday. Finally, can I push you for a prediction on your fight on Saturday night? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter how I win, but that title staying in Manchester, like I said, um, just here to get the win and get my hand raised. Ben, British title, English title fights, they're always good. They're always uh, good, yeah. they're always good. I think with Brad... We were always looking for that next Manchester, Manchester star. It mean nothing. There's nothing that would mean more to me than to be able to bring it through with Jack Cattrall and Brad Ray and even Clark Smith. We look at Ricky on the top of the bill. I know Anthony Crawley is going to be there. I remember going to his nights, and Brad will meet, remember as well. And and that's what it's about in this city. And Brad Ray is a is a local hero now. I think a lot of people are, are looking at him. 24 years old, going through the, the ranks at the moment, started with us on October the 16th last year in a war against Jess Smith and has just continued to build and build and build and he wants the big fights and he wanted that English title and even though it's Tyler Denny who we've seen in an absolute war with River Wilson Ben last time and came through really well, I think he's a, he's a fan friendly fighter, he's a great fighter to watch, it's got a great fight written all over it but this is Brad's time I believe and this is his time at the Manchester Arena and this is where we see him take his career to the next level. Next is heavyweight business, phrase I will come to you next. I think it's fair to say you've been frustrated with a, a couple of your opponents. There can be absolutely no complaints about Camille Sokolowski. Not at all but um, first of all you're doing a great job, uh, Dan. I think Adam <laughs> Smith needs to be careful because his, jo his job might have gone. But, um, yeah, this is the fight that, you know, we, we sort of spoke about this fight from the beginning of my career. Um, and now we've got it here. Uh, an opponent which I respect, and I've paid him that respect by, you know, training properly, efficiently, 
and um, I'm prepared for you know a, a good version of Kamil Sokolovsky. Is that a, a big part of this as well? Kamil is dangerous. Everybody knows that. He's had six weeks' notice for this fight, which is about five weeks more than he usually has for fights. Is this a real step up for you? It's a step up, yeah, 100%. Um, if, if I'm as good as I think I am, and, and I'm as good as you guys have, you know, buyed into me, then I should deal with this no problem. But I always say with these guys, you know, if I show up half-hearted, it can upset you, it can make you look silly. But this is about me showing that I'm a professional. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to just get myself through this fight. I'm here to do a job, and you'll see that. In Bournemouth, Bracamonte tried to, to put it on you a little bit. He wanted to force the issue, and we all know how that ended. Do you feel like the more a fighter tries to put it on you, the better the performance from Fraser Clark? The, the, the better the opponent, the better Fraser Clark. It's, it's really that simple. Um, you know, Bracamonte tried to put it on me and, and, and I landed the left hook. I know that Kamali is very tough, very strong, and isn't going to go away easy, but I feel like with my skill set, my power, and uh, my intentions, then, you know, I'll do the correct job. And winning's everything, winning's important. But I always say with prospects, you know, when I'm looking at prospects, it's, it's, it's how you deal with these people. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see on Saturday night. Um, I'm the real deal, let me tell you that. Ben, heavyweight fights are always fun, but this has the makings of an absolute barnstormer. Yeah, it's a heavyweight division. I've never seen so much scrutiny and attention on a, on a prospect as I've seen with Fraser. It's incredible. People want to see him in the big fights. He's a massive personality now in the sport. Obviously been doing a lot of punditry work on Sky as well, but he wants to do his talking in the ring. And this is the fight that he wants. He wants, he wants, to, he wants to move quickly. He wants the big fights. And obviously, four fights in to be fighting Kamal Sokolowski in a, in, a, in a tough fight with eight weeks' notice. We wanted to make sure Kamal had all the time in the world to, to prepare for this. This is, a, this is a good moment for Fraser. This is, this is him under the bright lights in a proper fight, showing them what he can do, and uh, I can't wait for it. A lot of people saying that that could be fight at a night, and if it's not that, it could definitely be this one. Chief support is the super lightweights, and it's British title business. Casey Benjamin takes on Dalton Smith. Casey, I'll come to you. Saturday night is a huge opportunity uh, against uh, a very dangerous Dalton Smith. What do you make of the fight? You know, um, I think it's a good fight. Uh, obviously, Dalton's a good fighter. He's got good ring IQ, but I think that I have way it takes to beat him. You've actually been looking at this fight for quite some time. I remember speaking to one of your stable mates earlier this year and you targeted Dalton Smith, which is something not many people do. What do you see in his game that you can exploit? Um, I think it, that was just due to it was the biggest fight out there for me and I always want to be in big fights. Um, I feel like me beating Dalton, that would just you know, set me up for big things. You've campaigned at 147, you're now down at super lightweight. Do you feel like your power is better down there? You've said that you think you'll be the first person to really test Dalton's chin. Yeah, 100%. Um, I feel like I've carried my uh, power down to this way and I feel stronger in the sense of um, my opponents are the same size as me now rather than fighting bigger people at 147. But yeah, um, I think I'll definitely test Dalton. You're both smart, thinking fighters. Are you expecting more of a chess match than, than perhaps the, the, the more pressure fighting? Than, are, are you expecting more of a chess match? Um, I haven't really, I ain't really going in expecting anything. Um, you know, I've watched, watched Dalton fight and I feel like the way he fights, I feel like I can beat him so yeah I feel like it, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna bring some that good. You've said Dalton will be your, your toughest test do you feel like you'll be his toughest test? Oh yeah 100% um, he'll be my toughest test and I'll be his, his toughest test so you know it just makes for a great fight. Dalton do you agree is, uh, is Casey your, your best opponent to date? We'll find out Saturday won't we? <laughs> but um, no respect there um, you know, we're in the gentleman's sport and 
you know, Casey's got himself into this mandatory position. Um, obviously, I won the, the belt back in August. And, you know, this is a golden ticket fight for Casey. And, you know, he's coming 100% to beat me. Um, you know, because I always said, you know, that the eyes what's on me now. You know, that red dot on the middle of my forehead gets bigger and bigger. And, you know, these people who's, who are challenging me now, you know, that can propel their careers if they beat me. So, you know, they're, they're coming with, you know, intentions to, you know, put, you know, derail the Dalton Smith train. Boxing is all about timing. Do you think this is too big of a jump for Casey too soon? You know, it shouldn't be. He's, you know, he's had many more fights for me and, you know, Casey should be in these big fights. And, you know, I, I just think that's what's going to be the difference on, on, on Saturday. It's, you know, I'm 13 fights in and, you know, boxed at a much, much higher level and, you know, come through with flying colours. But, you know, taking nothing away from Casey is, you know, he's a great fighter. Um, you know, he can, you know, he can mix it up. He can put, put, go on the front foot, on the back foot. So, yeah, we're, we're in for a, you know, very good fight Saturday. You've got a 83% KO ratio. Uh, Casey's talked about being able to test your chin, but what do you think happens when you land a big one on him? You know, we're in professional boxing and whoever gets it with an eight-ounce club, it's going to hurt, isn't it? But, you know, I don't seem to get it nowhere near as much as Casey. So, you know, the odds are, you know, Casey gets it more than me, but... You know, at the end of the day, it's a fight. And if anyone gets hit with eight arms clubs, it's going to work. But, you know, we'll see on Saturday. This will be your first defence of the British title. Was was the plan always to, to win it and then win it outright? Yeah, it was funny because, obviously, I won, the, I won it back in August when I, you know, beat Sam or Mason. And I think you get so many days to, to defend it against the mandatory, which we knew Casey was there. Um, you know, and then there was rumours going around and thinking, oh, Dalton's going to vacate and move on. It's like, no, we knew if we won the belt, we was vacating against Casey. So nothing got sprung up on us. We were straight back in the gym because we knew the date was going to come up and, um, you know, we knew we was facing Casey next. Looking at the division as a whole, domestically and, and at world level, there are some huge fights out there. We've seen your name regularly uh, put next to the likes of Ryan Garcia, um, and, and all the other world champions, are they the kind of fights that you're looking at and that are on the horizon for you? Of course, you know, those are the fights what are um, paying the bills back home, so, you know, they're, they're the big fights, but, you know, you can't take the eye off the ball. I've got, um, you know, I'm in a real fight on Saturday when I can't take my eye off the ball, and, you know, I've got to do it in style. Ben, this is a real fight, uh, a British title dust up. Um, I think a lot of people were surprised when you won the purse bid for this fight. Yeah, I know. Um, fair play to Dolan, because in all seriousness, he's, he's not our fighter, but he wanted to win the belt outright, and uh, he wanted to take that opportunity, and I think that's what we need in British boxing, even at that British level, is the guys coming together and putting it on the line. And as I said before, this was the fight that Casey always wanted, so it was an easy decision for him. Don't look, overlook Casey Benjamin. He really is an unbeaten fighter. He obviously lost in a tournament in a three-round, three-minute format, which any, anything can happen in. But he's developed his career really nicely now with Soggy and, and John Pegg. And this is their time, they believe. But Dalton's biggest test on Saturday night is going to be great to see how he performs. I think um, that division in the UK is, is really, really strong. Even it, obviously in the world, but in the UK with Jack Cattrall and Josh Taylor, hopefully being announced very soon. Adam Azim, who we signed this week, almost reminds me of a, when, when Amir Khan and Kel Brook were starting out, and there's going to be that comparison throughout their careers, I think, if they keep coming through the level. So it's a great fight, but I really think people can't undermine Casey Benjamin and what he's going to bring to the table on Saturday night. Couldn't agree more. Lastly, we have top of the bill. Natasha Jonas aims to become a world champion for the third time in 2022, what a year. But standing in her path is Marie Eve de Care. Marie, pleasure to have you here. You've said that absolutely nothing will stop you getting the win on Saturday night. On Saturday night. Yeah, of course. Well, well, first of all, thank you, Boxer, and thank you, Kirill Pivot Michel, for uh, having this event being held on. Because uh, back then, when I was a kid, like in the 90s, I was telling everybody, one day I'm going to be a professional athlete. I'm going to make a living out of my sport. And everybody laughed at it. And now, here we are, 
the main event at the AO Arena. So great job because little girl dreamed of that and now it came true. So it was my dream when I was a kid and there's nothing that's going to stop me from getting the win Saturday night. You are naturally bigger than Tasha. Do you feel like that is going to be a, a big telling sign in the fight? Do you feel like you're going to have to use your size in order to beat her? Are you saying I'm fat? <laughs> Definitely not. I know better than that. Yeah, for sure. I'm a natural 154 pounds. So clearly, we know we got the weight and the height advantage. Uh, we know Natasha is a smart fighter. We know she's made some adjustment. Uh, it's not a first fight at 154, so clearly we don't take it for granted. Uh, we've been doing our homework. We've been working out in the gym, working out with Southpaw, which is a really uh, good thing because that's going to be both different for both fighters. But clearly, we know I'm bigger, I'm stronger, and we know how we're going to take advantage of this. You only have one blemish on the record, and it is to Clarissa Shields. Are you looking down the line and looking at a potential rematch? You know what's funny? There's a fight Saturday. To me, that all it matters. My focus is only on the fight Saturday. Uh, I've been dreaming, sleeping, eating, boxing, Natasha Jonas. I think that's going to be something empty in my life when I'm going to stop watching footage of Natasha. So um, to me, that's all it matters. It's the fight Saturday. Sunday, it's going to be a different game. Sunday, we're going to have a, a new idea, a new clue of what's going to be next for me. But from now, the only focus is on Saturday. Natasha's on a, a hot streak at the moment. She's in the form of her life. What are you going to be able to do that will negate what she does? Well, that's funny because she's in the shape of life, but I am too. Um, we've been able to train with no injuries, with a lot of rest. Uh, I know Natasha has been having a busy year. For us, it's all the opposite. We've been able to rest. We've been able to heal some injuries. Uh, I've been able to miss boxing. Because from the beginning of my career, I could do fights over and over. And then you just set on the automatic pilot. And now I had time to miss boxing and to realize how I need boxing in my life. No boxing, no life. And that's pretty dangerous. Natasha, what a year you've had. Four fights in 12 months. Three potential world titles. Could you have written it better yourself? No, it's, I think it's been a year in boxing that everyone craves you know you I've always said that a, an active Natasha is a dangerous one and, and thanks to Ben and thanks to Sky they've, they've made that dream come true and made it possible have you seen holes and, and flaws in Marie's game that you feel like you can exploit yeah obviously you, you, you watch things but I don't take too much from you know the Clarissa loss obviously the, the southpaw there's a southpaw is a different thing and you know styles make fights but there's definitely things that we've worked on in the gym that we've seen and you know Joe's probably one of the most meticulous people when it comes to sorting out game tactics and plans and I just feel that whatever she brings and it hopefully is the best version of her that we're prepared for. The Ring Magazine belt is one of the most prestigious belts you can fight for. It's not always available. What does it mean to be able to fight for it? Yeah it's one of them belts um, like the two I've got in front of me that you, you know it's, it's up there and it's a, a lovely belt to look at it's a lovely belt to have and it's you know it's the number one versus the number two and it, it settles the score so to have that belt it'll, 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 you know confirm not just to me but to everyone there that I'm the top of the division you are at the top of the division now the super welterweight division you are the money fight you are the big ones you call the shots how many other options do you have after this fight if you get past Marie and what ones are you looking at? Very similar to herself. I don't look past Saturday. Um, there's no point because if, if Saturday doesn't go right, then the options close again and I'm back to square one. So I'm just focusing on what's in front of me um, and getting that out the way. And then I might even have a holiday after that. I might. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a busy year. I'm thankful and grateful. And I just want to finish it off with a bang. You touched on it briefly there, Southport against Southport. What differences and what changes are you going to have to make to be able to, to make up that height and reach advantage? I've actually, for the first time in a very long time, really enjoyed this camp. I've, you know, Southport, we don't, in the amateurs, you never really train for the Southport versus Southport because there's very few of them. 
Um, so you never get a whole camp specifically to learn on a style. And for this camp, it's been so enjoyable because of, I've learned and I've added things to me to my repertoire. And I think, yeah, I just want to go out there and show it on Saturday. And it's, it, it's been really enjoyable for me. Ben, does Natasha's year highlight what can happen when a fighter and a promoter pull in the same direction and completely commit? Yeah, I think it takes um, everyone to commit. Every fighter needs to be active to perform at their best. There's no secret about that. And um, it's gone from strength to strength. First of all, thank you to Yvonne Michelle. Thank you to Alexandra for being able to make this fight, this unification, this ring magazine belt. It's a big fight. It's the biggest that Tasha's had this year. It's the hardest fight. It's a, it's a first southpaw, I think, you've, you've faced. It's, it's, it's going to be a tough test. Make no mistake about it. I think to be here fighting for a third world title... Even if you'd said to me at the start of the year that that could happen, I wouldn't have believed you. So we've already won, but we want to take it to the next level now. As you said, Tasha wants to be the money fight in the division. She wants the big names. She wants to fight a 147 again. She wants to fight Katie Taylor again. But she has to come through Saturday night, and it is a tough test. And Marie De Care, from listening to her as well, she, this is her moment, and she's extremely confident. What it is great to see is... You know, we're two, three weeks on from Shields Marshall that did the, the biggest viewing figures we've ever done on Sky, and no one's even questioning why we've got this fight main event. Of course, it's the main event. It's a unification beat against with two top athletes at the top of the game with everything on the line. And, uh, yeah, it's another big moment for Tasha to top off what, what will be, hopefully, a historic year. I think there are some questions in the crowd for Marie. Jean-François Chabot from Radio-Canada, Montreal. Thank you for the opportunity. Question in French to Marie-Ève. Marie-Ève, jusqu'à quel point ce qui se passe en ce moment, tu l'avais déjà prévisualisé dans ta tête? Et euh, à quel genre de, de, de situation penses-tu être confronté pour empêcher Natacha de compléter son tour du chapeau? This is, how, this is now the time we test your French lesson. Who remembers French from school? You had French lessons in school? <laughs> yeah, nobody did, eh? So we're going to speak behind your back. C'est quelque chose que j'ai toujours rêvé. Tu sais, on est petit, puis des fois, on se voit jouer dans la ligne nationale. Des fois, on fait des trucs, puis on commente les événements comme si on était à la télé, puis on regarde nos idoles à l'écran, puis on se dit, un jour, ça va être nous, puis... Toute ma vie, c'est ce que j'ai toujours vu, c'est ce que j'ai toujours voulu réaliser. Et moi, je suis une fille d'action, donc en ce moment, c'est ce qu'on a fait. On a juste mis toutes les pièces du puzzle en place pour concrétiser ce grand rêve-là. Puis depuis qu'on est arrivé, depuis le début de ce camp d'entraînement, je vis à fond chaque instant de ça. Puis euh, la fin que j'ai imaginée est tellement joyeuse. J'espère que vous allez être là samedi pour la regarder. Merci. Thank you very much. For everyone that got the A in GCSE French, I'm sure we all understood. <laughs> um, that concludes our press conference. Marie, any final words to Tasha? Well, no, actually, uh, I'm really, really thrilled to face Natasha. I know she's been doing a lot for women box here, he, boxing here in Great Britain. She's been one of the first boxers to go to the Olympics. She's been opening the doors. So to me, it's a privilege to face her here in her hometown. Um, so I'm happy she's in the shape of her life. I'm in the shape of my life. So we're going to have the greatest matchup in history. And I think boxing fans are going to love it and are going to ask even more. Tasha, anything from you? No, just the same, just to replicate that. I appreciate uh, traveling over here and um, coming in the best shape of her life. And um, yeah, may, may the best woman win on Saturday. Ben, I'll end it with you. Tasha's able to go to the world time and time again. She doesn't look a day over 28, let alone 38. What are you expecting on Saturday night? Look, it's a, it's a top fight to top the bill, but it's an incredible card. I think from top to bottom, thank you to the fighters. Everyone's putting it on the line on Saturday night. Everyone's taking a risk. Everyone's stepping in there and they're fighting to, to develop their careers. I think it's going to be a huge night in Manchester. Of course, Ricky Hatton. And the event will follow. It's a, it's a massive atmosphere in there. As I say, over 7,000 tickets sold already. A great card on a great night in a great city. And I can't wait. Remaining tickets available at boxer.com, at boxer, across all social media platforms. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to have our... And the Ricky Hatton press conference will be getting roughly after 2 o'clock. Johnny, um, are you going to translate for us what Marie said? Uh, it's just, no. <laughs> I'm not even going to try also through that. No, but uh, uh, she's come across here very confident, <laughs> knows what uh, the job is in hand. She's been champion before. Uh, you look at the size difference of the two of them now. Um, how, do you think, how do you think that will come into play? Oh, massively, because uh, Claire likes to have a tear-up as well. And even though you look at a loss to, to Shields, um, she actually pushed Shields hard uh, to get that win. And I think this is going to be one of those fights. She's the naturally bigger fighter. She's the one that's been there before. She's still hungry, she's still young enough and fresh enough to still, to, to still give Natasha a kittens. It's, it's certainly going to be an interesting one. We talk about the confidence, though, of Natasha, and hopefully we'll be able to grab a word with her in a short while. But she seems to have had, like she said, the best camp of her career so far. Do, do you think that is because there is that confidence there? Is it, you're a lot calmer, you're a lot more confident. Could that be the fact? Uh, without a doubt, success breeds success. And plus, you're looking at the... the, 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 the great fights we've seen with Clarissa and, and Savannah, you know, Katie Taylor was out there, you know, so it inspired so many other fighters coming through and, and Natasha was that fighter that, that, that put, put female boxing as far as UK is concerned on the map in the Olympics so she wants to make sure she's uh, well and truly in that party uh, so at this stage you've got no excuse to be coming in ill prepared and uh, so that's why I camp for this. Once you know you're on, you're on. The, I just think now, if you, you you're fortunate to be a fighter that you've had weeks' notice, months' notice for a fight, you have no excuse to come in under underprepared. This is uh, Decare's first fight outside of uh, oh, second, second one outside out of Canada, but coming into Manchester Arena, we know what kind of a lion's den that can be. Do you, do you think she'll take it in the stride? Do you think that will bother her at all? I think any any sportsman or woman coming to the UK, experiencing for the first time British fans, will be intimidated by them. Um, I can remember Ricky Hatton going out to Vegas and him obviously taking half of Manchester out there. The security just were terrified. That, you know, they were singing, they were cheering, they were booing. They were, walked in packs. And here in Manchester, uh, I think the care's going to experience a lot of that where she sees the support, especially for women's boxing here. It'll be something very, very new for her. Uh, I think when she boxed Clarissa, it was in Flint, uh, in uh, Clarissa's hometown. So she's, she, 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 she knew what it was like having to be the away fighter. But the UK is very, very different. I think Takea's got her heels on as well, so that, that's not, not helping with the, uh, the height, is it? Yeah, but you know what? She's, 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 come, she's, come, she's come to um, her business, uh, dressed for the job, you know, no nonsense at all, so good on her. Very much all smiles right now, but it, it will be a, a different story on, on Saturday night between these two. If you go on YouTube and watch your guest fights, and watch how she fights, don't let looks deceive you, because she likes to have a tear up, she likes to get stuck in, she likes to fight, so she'll be all smiles, but this is business, and uh, she'll inspire so many others coming through. What goes through your mind right now? What do you think's going through theirs? Well, you know, this, this is the, the soft side of it. Uh, when we get to the weigh-in tomorrow, uh, once the weigh is done, you know the next time you see that opponent, you're going to be preparing to punch each other's face in. But um, all the hard work's been done now. This is the this is the mental side of it. Uh, so um, it's your chance to put an impression. You can't come dressed as though she's going for a, uh, out to dinner. She's thinking, you know what? This is me. I've come here to do a job. It's very elegant. Special. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's done the right thing to say, this is my business. This is what I'm doing. So uh, right frame of mind. Having a few exchanges. Uh, Natasha's back in the venue where, of course, she won her world title the third time of asking. That was on the Brooke Kahn undercard, wasn't it? Yeah. Unified in early September this year. There's a lot on the line for Tasha. A lot to gain, but a lot on the line. Yes, and you know what? This is, this is, 
she, she's had so much success here. She's used to that success, but she's also used to seeing the, ter the, the turn of the tide where she was the, 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 the sweetheart of, of the Olympics. Then when she lost it, the, the, the public's perception of her as a fighter uh, slipped away. So they expected uh, Terry Harper to walk through her. Then again, she redeemed herself. And now she redeemed herself twice, three times over for capturing the world title. And now again, she's in a tough fight. She knows it's a tough one. But the one thing about Natasha is she knows she's got a lot of fight, a lot of fire under the bonnet. I know you're looking forward to this one, Johnny. The British title <laughs> always always brings out something extra in, in the fighters, doesn't it? Because this is the fight that gets you out of the traps. If you're a domestic fighter and you fight for the British title, you know if you pick that up, your dream goes on. You've got a chance to box outside uh, uh, the UK and, and, and to box for Commonwealth, box for European, be respected on a world scale. And, and some fighters, very few, have never boxed very few successful world champions from the UK, haven't boxed a British title. And you speak to them afterwards, they wish they did because it's a great belt to have. But this is, going it, doing it this way, especially for Don Smith, is the traditional way. I hope he, uh, he makes his three defences of it. What about, what about Casey Benjamin though? He's unbeaten in 13, he has that momentum as well with him. What kind of problems do you think he will pose, Dalton Smith? Uh, he's got to, he's got, he's got to smother him. He's got to not let Dalton Smith get into a rhythm. He's got to make him feel uncomfortable. Uh, he's got to be as unorthodox as possible uh, and bring him something different. You try and box Don, outbox Dalton Smith, he'll walk through you. Yeah, you try and stand there and have a set up with him. He can bang it, he can punch, and he's proved that. Well, from the British title to the uh, English middleweight title, Tyler Denny versus Brad Ray. Again, this, this has all the ingredients, doesn't it, to be a bit of a cracker as well? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I met Brad, Way, uh, Brad Ray's sister, I think it was, on the holiday, before he even turned professional, and she was raving about him. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be watching him, he'll be on Sky, he's a, he's a great little fire. And then, obviously, when I bumped into him, I told him the story. She said, yeah, she told me what she told you. And he said... What do you like about him? Oh, I like his attitude. Uh, I like his no-nonsense. It's business for him. He has ambition, he has dreams. And I like that. I like that with most fighters that get here. But I just like the fact that I was nodded off about him. But, you know, his sister was his, his biggest cheerleader. It will be quite a special night for him as well, being on the uh, the same card, the same show as Ricky Hatton. We know yeah. he's been training with him in the gym. And, and he, wants to, he wants to create, basically, what Ricky did and have that big fan base in Manchester, which really is, I think, quite special. His childhood hero. And, 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 and how often do you manage to, hit, to meet your childhood hero and work with him and look up to him and be inspired by him? So all, all the boxes ticks for him. Six rounds at Cruiserweight, Vidal Riley, Ross McGuigan. Um, so far, so good, isn't it, for Vidal Riley? What, what are you looking to see from him on Saturday, though? You know, Vidal, you hear so much about him, and he's not letting anybody rush him. Uh, he's still happy to try and develop and uh, get his stripes under the radar. He's the ultimate cool customer, though, isn't oh, he? Completely cool. And so, so when you don't know what he's doing, but he's doing it, you think, you know, you can see there's potential with Schumann. And I see his style of fight. I think he's got the power, he's got the confidence, he's got the, the, the experience. This will be a good fight. Here he comes. Big phrase, six rounds at heavyweight for him against Camille Sokolowski. As we talked about at the top of the programme, they touched on it in the press conference. This is a test on paper for Big Braze, but it's a test that he is very much relishing. He wants this. So, so Swarovski, uh, if I said it right, is, is, is classed as, as the, one of those tough journeymen. You do not give a second chance. You give him a second chance and he ruins your career. And that's what he can do. That's what he's good at doing. So... Uh, it's a good one for him to test him. We, we've got to stand up, stand up and, and, and talk at the same time, Johnny. Get on the platform. That is because Tasha's coming up as well to uh, join the fan. Tasha, do you want to go in the middle? Come on, Shawnee. <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> How are you feeling? You're looking well. You said up there, this has been one of your, probably your favourite camps so far. Why is that? Well, what's the difference, do you think? I think, you know, the stress and the pressure of the Namas has gone. Um, and I, like I just treat and everything else as a bonus, and, and, and I think 
just just the whole camp of learning something totally different. I mean, like it's very, very rare that you get a South Pole. This is a South Pole. And is it quite refreshing to, yeah. to get your teeth stuck into something? It is. It's just like sometimes you're going into the gym and you know it's going over the same drills and but this has been a totally different camp. The, the setup's been different. How we how you throw your shots and where you place your shots and, and what shots you throw has been totally different and to have a whole camp dedicated to that is it's been like for me it's just been a bit of a fresh air. When we uh, spoke to you in London um, a few weeks back and I asked you, I said, how did it feel when you unified? Did it change you? You said not particularly, but you must have an air of confidence going into this that has given you that something bit different, that bit extra. I think it's like Fraser says, all the, all the work that you put in in camp gives you that confidence because you know how hard and what you've put in. And and you, you, I know how, how, how meticulous Joe is, so... Everything that we've done is preparing for the best version of her. So whatever she comes with, we've got an answer for. And, and we're going to impose my strengths as well. Where do you see Decare's weaknesses? Um, there's a few. I, I don't want to give us away too much of the game plan. But, you know, yeah, I think my speed, my accuracy and my power um, is, is, is something that she hasn't dealt with before. And we were just touching on the, uh, the atmosphere in Manchester. You're, of course, back in the same venue where you won your world title, aren't you? Which is going to be a special night indeed. Um, what do you think it's going to come down to? How do you think De Care will, will deal with what it's going to be like in Manchester? Because, as I said to Johnny, it's a bit of a lion's den sometimes. Yeah, it can be. Um, but I think, you know, as an athlete, you, when the, you can be as nervous as you want when you're going in, but when the, the, the first bell goes, all them nervous jitters go away and you're just prepared for the fight in hand. And she, no matter what she feels like going in, when you're in there and in that moment, Everything goes back to what you what you know and what you've learned. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it'll affect her that much, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, hope, it, hopefully it does for me. There's, there's a bit of talk, isn't there? Because Decare has naturally been around super welter welter her whole career, as we know. With you, you jumped up a few weights, but this is you know you've had a couple of fights now at, at the weight. You say you feel well, the fittest, the most strong you've ever been. Do you think that will be anything in the fight on Saturday night? Do you think the size difference will be anything? I definitely think I've developed into the weight. Obviously, it's not a weight that's natural to me. Um, but, you know, I've had, this is my third camp um, going and, and being at this weight. And there is improvement. So there's always improvement in every camp. Otherwise, you, would, you wouldn't progress. But, yeah, I think I just don't think she's faced anything like me, if I'm honest. She had her heels on as well. <laughs> that, that, that's <laughs> a lot of bit taller. What do you think it's going to come down to then on Saturday? Uh, just being smart um, and, and yeah, just sticking to the game plan and, and going and just doing what you've done in camp. That's it. That's it. That easy. Are we doing the usual trick? Are you coming to work with us afterwards? Because <laughs> normally you don't get any time to celebrate. We're normally it's getting like you in the Superman to just out the shorts into the dress yeah. and back in with us again. You, you do seem very relaxed, very happy, which, as we know, is a dangerous fighter. Yeah, like, like I said, I've got nothing to complain about. I smile because I'm happy in you know home and life and everything so you know i've just got to the most frustrating part is even after bergholz and everyone was saying you know that we believe that's one of your best performances i still feel like there was things that i didn't show and i didn't we like we specifically done in camp that i didn't so that was frustrating for me but now you know going in i want to add that and plus extra what i've learned so are you thinking beyond this fight because there's, there's talk of clarissa says she might come down to your weight there's a smile there on your face um are you, are you thinking beyond this one, or, or is it all eyes on this one? No, it, you can't. If, if this one doesn't go right, none of the others happen. So it has to be all about this one. And, and I've looked past things before, and it didn't work out for me, so now I'm fully focused on just the, the fight on Saturday. Which is easier said than done, Johnny, because when there's a bit of noise around a fighter, it's very easy to say, I am all eyes on it, but it's not that easy. It does help you get, make sure you get this job done right, because you think, you know, I've got to get through this if I think I'm at that level then. That here in the UK, I'm, I'm quite sure Clarissa would love to come back to the UK again, especially after the impression she left the last time. And what a fight, what a, what a dragon slayer uh, it would be for Natasha to uh, if this fight came through. Give us a prediction, what's going to happen? Oh, I never give predictions, you know me. Um, but it's gonna I be can try, fight. I try every time. Uh, what, every one day it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, it's going to be, a, I've prepared myself for 10 tough, hard rounds, and I'm pretty sure that she's done the same, so made the best woman, like I said. You know what, best of luck, Tasha. Very much looking forward to seeing you on Saturday night. We'll see you tomorrow as well. Um, that's it from this undercard presser. Uh, later on this afternoon, it will be the Hatton Barrera presser, so make sure you join us for that. 
Uh, Johnny, I'll see you tomorrow for the way. And make sure you join us for that. That's one o'clock. And of course, Saturday night, the action gets underway from 7 p.m. on Sky Sports Arena. See you then.